Each new workbook has three tabs available by default. Each tab represents a worksheet within the workbook. We've used only one spreadsheet so far to record income and expenses. Let's rename the current sheet from Sheet 1 to Income and Expenses. Double-click the first sheet tab to select the current name. Type Income and Expenses. Press the Enter key. The new sheet name is certainly more descriptive than the default name. Click the Sheet 2 tab. Sheet 2 is now the active sheet and it contains no data. Let's rename Sheet 2 to Personnel. Double-click Sheet 3 and rename it Clients. Let's also set each sheet apart by assigning a different color to each sheet tab. Right-click the Income and Expenses tab. A shortcut menu appears. These options are available only to the selected sheet tab. Move the mouse pointer over the tab color option. A color window opens to the right. Suzanne, choose the light blue color from the standard colors area. Once we've selected the color, the shortcut menu will disappear. The sheet name will have a gradient background with the color we picked. However, when another sheet is selected, this entire sheet tab will become the chosen color. Right-click the Personnel tab and choose a color for it, such as green. Right-click the Clients tab and choose a color for it. Red is our color. Each sheet is clearly labeled with a unique name and color. We are not limited only to the three spreadsheets provided. In fact, we could change Excel's default settings to provide each new workbook with as many as 255 spreadsheets. We will leave the default setting at 3, but our particular workbook requires two additional spreadsheets. To add our first sheet, click the Tab button directly next to the Clients tab. When we mouse over the tab, it will say Insert Worksheet. The new worksheet, named Sheet 4, appears to the left of the tab we right-clicked. Double-click the tab to select its name. Type Charts and press Enter. We will place our charts on this particular sheet. Choose a color to apply to this sheet tab. Right-click the tab and select the appropriate option from the pop-up menu. Suzanne is choosing yellow. Let's add one more sheet. Suzanne, right-click the first tab, Income and Expenses. Select Insert at the top of the shortcut menu. The Insert dialog box appears with Worksheet currently selected on the General tab. Click OK to accept the worksheet selection and close the Insert dialog box. The tab for the new worksheet appears before the Income and Expenses tab. Using the Insert Sheet button creates a new worksheet at the end of all the existing worksheets, while right-clicking a tab to select Insert from the menu puts the new one just before the selected worksheet. Name the new sheet Rare Books and assign it a different color from the other sheet tabs. Suzanne is using a shade of purple. Now we've got our two additional spreadsheets included in this workbook. Click each sheet tab to move from one sheet to another. Let's create one more sheet to this workbook using whichever method preferred. On second thought, it looks like we have a sufficient number of spreadsheets in this workbook, so we won't need this new sheet after all. We can delete a sheet as easily as we can add one. Right-click the tab of the new worksheet. Choose Delete from the pop-up menu, and the sheet vanishes. However, keep in mind once a sheet is deleted, it cannot be retrieved. Undo will not work in this instance. A deleted sheet is eliminated permanently. However, we can add another sheet whenever we need one. Since this sheet was empty, it was permanently deleted with no problems. Let's see what happens if we try and delete a sheet with data. Right-click Income and Expenses and select Delete. Because this sheet contains data, a message box asks if we actually want to delete the sheet. We want to keep our Income and Expenses worksheet, so click Cancel. 
The current order of the sheets contained in the workbook can also be changed. Click the Charts tab and drag to the right of the Income and Expenses tab. As we click and begin to drag, a small black arrow shows where the spreadsheet might be placed. The mouse pointer also has a sheet of paper icon attached to it. Click the Rare Books tab and drag to the right of the Clients tab. We often spend a great deal of time formatting a spreadsheet, adjusting column widths and writing formulas. It takes time to get that spreadsheet to look just right and to function as we want it to. On more than one occasion, we could use this spreadsheet again and again within the same workbook. For example, the Income and Expenses sheet contains data as it pertains to 2006, and now it's December, and we are preparing for next year. We have the same need to record income and expenses for 2007. Rather than create a new spreadsheet with the same data labels of months, expenses, and so forth, we can copy the sheet we used this year for next year. We'll still have to record the correct monthly income and expense amounts in our new spreadsheet, but this way we do not need to create a new sheet, re-enter the labels, apply the various formats, and recreate the formulas. First, let's change the name of the Income and Expenses sheet just slightly. Double-click the name of the sheet to select it and press the End button to move the cursor to the end of the label. Type a space and enter 2007. Press Enter to accept the change. Let's make a copy of this sheet for the coming year. Click and hold down the mouse button on the Sheet tab of the sheet we want to copy to make it active. In this instance, choose Income and Expenses 2007. While still holding down the mouse button, press the Control key. We see the same small black arrow and mouse pointer that shows when a sheet is being moved. However, this time a plus sign shows in the sheet attached to the mouse pointer, meaning Excel will copy the sheet rather than reposition it. Drag to the right of Rare Books and a new copy of the Income and Expenses 2007 sheet appears. Since sheet names must be unique, Excel adds a 2 to the end of the new sheet name. Double-click the New Sheet tab to select its name, change 2007 to 2008, and delete the 2. Press Enter or click a cell to move off the Sheet tab. Now we have six sheets in this workbook. Depending on the settings on your machine, you may not be able to see each tab in its entirety because of the long names. Let's make some adjustments. To the right of the last visible tab is a horizontal scroll bar. Position the mouse pointer just to the left of the scroll bar until the mouse pointer changes to a black double-sided arrow. As we click and drag to the right, we create more space for the tab area. To help us move through the worksheet tabs easier, there are four controls to the left of the tabs. The triangle with the bar to the left moves us to the first worksheet, while the triangle with the bar to the right moves us to the last worksheet. The two triangles in the center move us one worksheet to the left or right. Click the control on the far left. Click the first sheet tab, Income and Expenses 2007, if it is not already selected. We won't spend time now making many changes to the data on this sheet, but let's make one little change. Click cell A2 and type 2007. Press the Enter key. Click cell A2 again. From the Home tab on the ribbon, click the bold icon on the font tool area and change the font size to 14. Note the row height adjusts to accommodate the enlarged type. We now have a functional spreadsheet. Let's see how to print our spreadsheet.